Hear me? <laughs> Can y'all hear me over there? All right, that's good. I'm hoping you don't hear me too good. <laughs> okay, let's... Can, can we stand? I think we're going to have one song, so I think we'll stand. Leaning on the everlasting arms. be seated. What a good looking bunch tonight. Glad that you are here. Any prayer requests on this side this evening? Stephanie and Linda. Okay. Anybody else that's mother's care? Okay. Anybody else on this side? Ed? Okay, Glenna and Glenna's brother. Okay. Anybody else on this side? How about here in the middle? Miss Judy?
Anybody else here in the middle? Miss Kathy? Michelle? Saw another hand here. Brother Martin? Yep. Absolutely. Anybody else in the middle? Back in the back, Pauline? Oh. How about over here on this side? Nobody on this side? Okay. Any praises? Any praises? Lord's good. Um, Sunday night, those of you that were able to go over, we had a wonderful time. Um, um, they installed Dave as their pastor, and I preached the charge to Dave and the church on how they're to behave with their pastor. And um, uh, what a good time. Th Dave invited me back. I was surprised. Those poor folks. My goodness gracious. Take care of my light work, will you? God's good. You know, when you, when, you, when you use the Bible and speak the Bible, it, it, it's a lot easier. It really is. So, anybody else? Any praises? And the Lord's already blessed them. Um, when they, when the, he started preaching over there, there was only 50-something people, and they had a, over 100 Sunday already. So, uh, keep them in your prayers. Wonderful facility. God blessed them with a wonderful facility. Uh, it should for, I don't know, three and a half point, uh, three point five million or something like that. But um, praise the Lord for them and uh, what God's going to do there. I'm excited for them. Anybody else? Randy and Terry. Randy and Terry are doing well. They've got a few folks out on, on, on uh, vacation but they still were in the 30s Sunday uh, with some folks gone on vacation. So um, praise the Lord. The attendance has started to go back up there too. So I'm grateful. God's working. Brother Mike? Uh, I did speak with uh, Phyllis. Um, he's pretty bruised up. He's pretty bruised up from where he took his fall. Uh, she said both of his eyes, he fell on the one side and blacked his eye and bruised him up and stuff on the one side. 
but now the bruises have gone to the other side also. So basically his, his face is bruised up pretty bad. So keep Larry in your prayers from, from where he fell the other day. We certainly can. Dick's doing better. Dick's doing better. Don't know if it was just, a, you know, maybe a 24-hour bug or whatever, but um, she relayed to us that it was from his COVID shot, but then I heard that his COVID shot was in February. So it might have been something other than that. Oh, His dad had heart surgery yesterday, Durant's. So uh, keep keep him in prayer also. And we've got some folks who'll be having surgery here in the in the near future. Okay, uh, Miss Judy will on the third of August, and then um, uh, the thirteenth, Tom. So uh, keep them in your prayers. And then Jackie Ayers will be having surgery at the end of the month on the 27th. So if you would, please keep these folks in prayer. Uh, I know that they would appreciate it. Okay? All right. Where you're at or up here in front, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer and ask them to ask him to bless our time in his word and these requests, if you would.
Yes. Uh, um, if you would, tomorrow Ben and Jen are finally going to, uh, Ben's finally going to be moving totally here. And they're coming in with a truck in the morning. And I don't believe it's a big one. They, they had brought the big one the last time. But if you can help in the morning unload that truck, uh, please see me. It shouldn't take very long at all. And uh, we'll be able to get you the address and everything at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, to put some of their stuff in, in storage. Um, they, they came in uh, today or tonight. They should be here tonight. And they're going to finish. Uh, they're selling their house there and moving here. So if you would, please, um, if you can help, please let me know, okay? Take your Bible, turn to John chapter number 16. John chapter number 16. We've been dealing with spiritual growth, and it is important that we get plugged into the right source. I gave an illustration last week about having the best of refrigerators, and the thing that happened was it wasn't plugged in. So it cannot operate properly um, in doing so. Well, you know the same thing happens in our spiritual lives, in our Christian lives, if we are not plugged into the Holy Spirit of God, and what I mean by that is if we do not let Him control our steps, I guarantee you that we are going to get off base. We're not going to grow in the Spirit. We're not going to grow in the Word. We're not going to grow spiritually in our lives because we're going to let everything else dictate our thought process and our behavior. And as you get into John chapter number 16, you're going to notice that the Lord gave a comforter who is the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit of God was given a job description of how He was to guide us into all truth. That He would not speak of Himself, but that He would speak of Jesus Christ and the things of Christ. And we have to be plugged into that power source. He came in Acts chapter number 2 and empowered the church as the Spirit of God would fall upon them in Acts chapter number 2. Jesus had already warned the disciples that He had to go away because if He didn't go away, then the Comforter would not come. That's why over in John chapter 14... He tells them that he is going to go away. And how was their reaction when he made mention of this? They were troubled. They were upset. And he says, let not your heart be troubled. Don't let it be troubled. He tells them, I'm going to send you another comforter. Why were they comforted? Anybody? Why were they comforted to begin with? He was with them 24-7. But now all of a sudden, he's going to be gone. Now, he's given us the Spirit of God, right? When we accept Christ as personal Savior, the Holy Spirit of God comes in and takes up residence. So if he comes in and takes up residence, where's the Spirit of God? He's inside of us. But a lot of times, we do not behave as if he's inside of us. We behave as if he's some mystical, floating spirit out there that has nothing to do with us. When in essence, he is our power source in living this life. One of the things we've got to remember is the Lord gave us everything that we need for life and for godliness. How we're to behave, how we're supposed to think, everything about our Christian life how we're supposed to go against temptation. All of those things, our problem is, is that we operate totally opposite of the Spirit of God. And as you go into the Word of God, he says in John chapter number 16, that he's going to send us this comforter. Okay? One of the things that we've got to do as Christians is this. We've got to get rid of the do-it-yourself approach in our life. I'm going to tell every one of us in this room 
You cannot live this Christian life by yourself. You can't do it. Then why do we try? Why do we try? Because as you go through and look, in chapter 14, he tells them that I'm going away. They get all upset and excited. Chapter number 15, you read in the book of John, and he begins to tell them on how, they're, how they are to abide in the vine. That if they do not abide in the vine, that they will accomplish nothing in their life. For without me, ye can do nothing. So he goes through and he says, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm leaving. You need to abide in me and I in you. And if you do that, then you will bear fruit. What? More fruit, much fruit. So he tells them that they, they have this opportunity where they can grow, but their abiding has to take place in Jesus Christ. And the one that helps us and enables us each and every day is the Holy Spirit of God. You know, when I go to uh, Home Depot, it usually means that I have to fix something. Okay? Yeah, because I am mechanically inclined. So, but it means that I have to fix something. When you go to Home Depot or you go to Lowe's, it's probably because there's something in your home that needs mended, needs fixed, needs repaired. Do you know what? Every time we open the Word of God, it's for us to realize that there are things that we need to fix in our life. Things that need changed. Things that need repaired in our life. And the thing is, though, is that it all depends on who we want to control us. Now, let's face the facts. We live in a time period where no one is going to submit or relinquish their self in under someone else's authority. Thank, this is my body. I'm going to do with it what I will. This is my thought. I'm doing this. It doesn't care. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I don't care about this. That We just don't want to be in under the auspices of somebody else's authority. So we circumvent it or we go around it. Well, it's no different in our Christian, our Christian life. Do we want God to really have control over us? That's what it all boils down to with spiritual growth. Do we really want the Lord to control us or not? Do we want to yield to Him and submit to Him or not? Or do we put our own preferences and thoughts and then guise it under the idea of we're doing what's right? That's, that's something we need to think about. Because it's going to hinder our spiritual growth in a, in, in, down the line and in the process because we find ourselves not operating in the control of the Spirit. We find ourselves operating in under the mindset and the control of the flesh. Right? Rattle your head this way because it's true. And I'm going to give you some verses to back it up in just a second. Because what happens is, is that He gave us the Holy Spirit of God to help us in our Christian life, but if we do not let Him lead and control, we will not grow. We won't grow. We may possess the Spirit, but do we have the power and the influence of the Spirit? Big difference. See, He gave us the Spirit so that we would have joy. He gave us the Spirit for His service. He gave us the Spirit for witnessing and to be a witness. He gave us the Spirit in that hour of persecution. And we are told that we're to walk in the Spirit. And when we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Go to Ephesians, if you would, please. 
The book of Ephesians, chapter number 5. In verse number 18, it says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. If you go back into chapter number 4 and the beginning of chapter number 5, you're going to see that Paul writing to the church of Ephesus is explaining to the church of Ephesus how they are to walk in their Christian life. And there are five walks that are mentioned in chapter number 4 and chapter number 5, before he even gets to the point of saying, what? Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. In chapter 4, verse number 1, he tells them to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith they are called. That they need to walk in honor, in the fact of knowing that what Christ has done for them you go into chapter number 4 and verse number 17. He tells them not to walk as other Gentiles walk. We're all Gentiles in this room. Question. Should we walk in the same mindset we had before we accepted Christ? Absolutely not, but we do. We operate in the flesh... We operate in the old mindset. He says, don't you walk as the other Gentiles do. And he's making reference to the way that they walk now. What? Out of the mindset of Christ. He goes through and he tells them in chapter 5 and verse 2 that they are to walk in love. That means that they're to have preference over someone else and that they're to demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter the situation. They're to demonstrate the love of Christ. That they're to walk as children of light in verse number 8 of chapter 5. And that they are to walk circumspectly. I've always used this illustration in using that verse where it says to walk circumspectly. If you want an old tomcat to walk circumspectly, you put two big dogs on each side of a fence and put him up on the, on the rail of that fence and see if he doesn't walk circumspectly. Because if not, he may end up dinner. So he tells us that there is a way to walk. He tells us to be awake, to be wise, to redeem the time as you walk circumspectly. And then he uses this terminology, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, because of this, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And then he goes through into that part where he says that you need to be what? You need to be filled with the Spirit. Now let me ask you this. There are those that believe that you can be filled with the Spirit more than once. Is that true? Anybody? Can you be filled with the Spirit more than once? There you go, Brother Mike. When you got saved, you got all of the Holy Spirit right then. All of him right then. You didn't get a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit. The Bible says that he came in and took up residence and that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. Okay? The word filled there doesn't mean that you get him a little bit at a time. Like you're filling up a glass of water. It means this, that you allow the Spirit of God to totally control you totally control us that's what it means so when we say that we're filled with the spirit it means that we have yielded ourselves to the holy spirit of god okay 
that we're going to let the Holy Spirit of God guide our thoughts. Now, if you go over into Luke chapter number 22, and I want you to turn there with me. I want you to turn there with me in Luke chapter 22. I think this is a good illustration for each and every one of us. Because here, and I want to give this example because here is Peter that's been around the Lord 24-7. 24-7. And how much did the Lord teach him? A whole lot. You can answer tonight. It's, they're not trick questions. He taught, he taught them continually. But in Luke chapter number 22, I want you to catch this. Because there's always a beginning of a downward spiral in our spiritual growth. Because if you get into Luke chapter number 22 in verse 31, and, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon... Behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Was that a warning to him? It was a warning. Can I say to each and every one in this room, the devil would take no more pleasure to see you fall. He would take no more pleasure than to see you or I even be used against the word of God. You say, really? Well, let's read through a little bit of Luke chapter 22, and I want you to see this. In Luke chapter 22, you begin to see how Peter got to his denial of Jesus Christ. And let me give you a few items that led to that denial. Look at verse 33. In verse 33 of chapter 22, Jesus is getting ready to foretell Peter's denial. And he's just said, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. And then in verse number 33, Listen to Peter's response. After he's told him this, and he says, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Now, one of the things that Peter had a problem with is self-confidence. Here, the Lord's already told him, hey, Satan's, gonna, Satan's wanting to sift you as wheat. He's wanting to destroy you. And he goes, hey, uh, Lord, I got this. I am ready to go with thee both into prison and into death. If you go into verse number 40 and verse number 45, his second downfall would be this. And when he was at that, the place, he said unto them, Pray ye that ye enter not into temptation. Verse 45. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping. So not only was he self-confident, now Jesus has told them that they need to what? Watch and pray lest they enter into temptation. Did they pray? No. Did they watch? Not at all. So here he is. The downward spiral has begun. Thirdly, look at verse 50.
And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Who was that? Uh, do you think that he was operating in the flesh in being carnal? Yes, that's what carnality is. It means you operate in the flesh and not the spirit. So he, here he is. He's on the downward spiral. He's been warned by the Lord. And now he has shown, I got this. Then he's turned around and he hasn't prayed when he's been warned that he needs to watch and pray. Then he has cut off the servant's ear. Verse number 33 and verse number 54. Catch this again. He says, I'm, I'll, I'll go into prison with you and to death. Look at verse 54. Then took they him and led him and brought him unto the high priest's house. And where was Peter? So much for dying and going to prison for him. Verse 55. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. What's the Bible tell us in Psalm 1? That we're not to sit or stand in the way of those that are going to be contrary to the Word of God. You say, why, why are we traveling this path? Because it, it has to do with our spiritual growth. Because we find ourselves listening to outside voices or other voices that are bringing up things contrary to the Word of God. And when we do that, it will hinder our spiritual growth. Because we have to choose what we're going to do. Are we going to follow what the Scripture says? Or are we going to go our own way and do our own thing? So here's the outset. He becomes now insensitive to the things of God in verse 31 through 33. And in verse number 40, it says this, And when he was at that place, he said unto them, Pray ye that ye enter not into temptation. He didn't follow in any of those things. He became insensitive to the warning of Almighty God pertaining to those things that would hurt him. We've got to understand that there are things that we do in this life that will stunt our growth. Remember when we were growing up, don't you drink that, that'll stunt your growth. Don't you take that in. But nonetheless, we don't heed the warning from the Word of God. And then it begins to backfire, and we find ourselves spiritually declining, just like Peter did, to where when you get over into verse 56 through 60, he openly denied the Lord, not once, not twice, but three times. What was he operating in? The flesh. He was operating in the flesh. Because Satan wants to rule over our emotions and our passions and our actions and our attitudes. And if we do not yield to the Spirit of God, we give Satan permission to influence us. That's why this is a continuous process. Nobody and nowhere in the Word of God is it said that when we get saved that everything is without problems. I thought if I got saved, this would all go... Just the beginning. And can I say this? The closer you get to God, the worse it's going to get. The worse it's going to get. But see, he's saying it's just like an alcoholic. You're to be controlled by the Spirit of God just like that alcoholic or that drunk is controlled by what's inside of that bottle. Now, I grew up, I grew up in a home where my dad drank like a fish, just to be honest with you. And what happened was, and I'm glad he got saved my second year of Bible college, and all of it was stripped out of the house. Don't think that you can't stop something once you know Christ is personal Savior. Don't think, oh, I got this habit that's got a hold. No, it all depends who you're going to say sick him to, the Spirit of God or the flesh. And I can remember, he went in and he grabbed every one of those bottles out the, out 
gone. Not touched a drop since. But see, there were many nights where he came home, he was staggering, his face was all slurred. What was in that bottle controlled him. What's on the inside of us ought to control us. What's on the inside of us should influence us. Should make us behave and do what God says in His Word. Why? Because He says that we are to yield the right of way of our bodies and our behavior to Almighty God. See, being filled with the Spirit is key to our spiritual growth, our spiritual power, and our spirit actions in our life. Romans chapter number 6 says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. What did he do? He quickened us and made us alive according to Ephesians chapter number 2. I was a dead man walking. I had no life. But when He saved me, He quickened me or He made me alive in Jesus Christ, according to Ephesians chapter number 2. Here He says that as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. The term unrighteousness gives the idea of fulfilling passions and desires that are totally against the word of God. What should our tongue do? Our tongue should be focused on praising the Lord. Our hands should be on labor for Him. Our feet should be swift to servicing Him. Our ears is not to listen to words of deceit that would lead others astray. Turn over to Romans 8 with me if you would. Romans chapter number 8. Look at verse number 4 through 8. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the, what? Flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Are they worried about spiritual matters? Not according to this. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against who? Against God Himself. So when we act in the flesh and in our carnal minds and our carnal attitudes, what happens is, is that we are totally going against God Himself. Verse 7, To be carnally minded is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Him that knoweth to doeth good, and doeth it not, it is what? Sin. It is sin. See, when we don't yield the right of way, when we do not yoke up with the Lord, and follow what He wants in our lives, we're not going to spiritually grow. It's going to hinder us. When we do not operate in the Spirit instead of the flesh. Because when you go into Galatians chapter number 5, and we dealt with this the other day in our continued class. When you go into chapter number 5, Paul dissects the things of the flesh 
and the things of the Spirit. He goes through and he says, when you walk after the flesh, here are items that are going to happen in your life. All the way down to where it's going to cause strife. Electioneering. But then he says this, He goes, we are to walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the, what? Lust of the flesh. So he says, you have a determination to make. Do you want to walk in the flesh? And then ultimately end up doing these things over here? Or do you want to walk in the Spirit? Where there's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. He said, but you have to make that determination. You have to make that determination. And he goes through and he says, if you're going to have the operation of the Spirit of God, these things will be manifest in your life. Now, folks, I want us all to understand this. Every bit of this has to do with our spiritual growth. Every bit of it. And here's the other thing it shows us. When it's not in operation and we're not walking in the Spirit, it'll be manifest in our lives. It'll be showed forth in our lives. Because we'll do things contrary to the Word of God, or the opposite of the Spirit of God. And we will justify it by our own carnal thinking. And say, yeah, it's okay. And that's not the case. The only thing we're doing then is we're hindering our relationship with the Lord and our spiritual growth. That's all we're doing. And He's told us that we need to what? Have the Spirit control our lives. Okay? And next week we'll move on to a different topic. I appreciate you being here. And let's be dismissed in prayer. Please do not forget, if you can help in the morning at 10 o'clock, please see me. And um, um, Michelle, you have that address? Um, If you can help, do this. Get the address from her, because I don't have it. All right? But it should not take, if we got a couple people, it should not take long, because most of their stuff was already delivered in the last truckload. All right? Hey, let's be dismissed this evening. And ask the Lord to continue to grow us up. Invite somebody to be with you this coming Lord's Day. The Zis family will be with us, missionaries on their way to the Philippines. Okay? Brother Mike Siegel, would you dismiss us, please?